Hello and welcome to another Fountain Insight video. My name is Chris Reeve. I'm the social media manager here at Fountain. I'm delighted today to be joined by Fountain's marketing manager, David Cooper, aka uh, Deco. Uh, Deco, how are you doing? You well? Yeah, not bad, man. Thank you very much. How are you, Chris? Um, I'm pleased you're good. I'm very good. Thank you for asking. And today we're, we're talking about why every business needs a full funnel marketing strategy. But first of all, DK, for those that don't know, what actually is a full funnel marketing strategy? Sure. Yeah. So full funnel marketing or FFM, as a lot of people refer to it as, is basically in short, identifying every stage of your customer funnel and then being able to implement marketing at each stage that's relevant to, to the audience. So starting at the top, top of funnel, um, having some introductory and useful content to them that really grabs them and gets that awareness out there. And then having some sort of remarketing tracking pixel on that landing page that offered the content so you can then remarket to them, keep offering good content, keep staying front of mind to them in as many channels as possible, and then finally, bottom of funnel to really get them when they're in that intent to per to actually purchase and buy. Um, and hopefully you've been tracking the whole way so you can maximize your profitability. Brilliant description for those that don't know. Thank you, Deco. What, what, what is the best approach to full funnel marketing then? What, what would you do if you were starting out? It really uh, is a balance of what uh, McKinsey Company and Port, uh, McKinsey Company uh, reports um, Kind of findings are they they say it's a balance of generational focuses and whether it is generational I, I i'm not entirely sure but i definitely agree with their with their outcomes from this so what they identify is how new generations like like us um in digital marketing we focus on short-term wins we focus on the kind of the performance marketing side of things and whether it's trackable so we can see exactly what the returns are um, on any kind of spend we have. Whereas uh, more traditional and older generations will more focus on long-term brand building and the kind of more awareness stuff and, the, and they won't focus so much on tracking. And there are both pros and cons to, to both approaches as you could probably gather from what I'm saying. And um, Les Binet has a really, really good way of summing this up um, in, in basically doing both, making sure you're doing that long-term brand building over time, but also making sure you've got that performance there for those short term wins. So you know, and again, that's the thing is trying to get that like trackability into as much of it as possible. Really interesting point and fascinating to, to talk about generational marketing almost there. I feel like people quite often miss out there. So quite an interesting insight from you, Deco. Um, so we're talking about full funnel marketing, obviously, but, but how do you actually go about implementing it in an organization? It's quite, quite, a, quite a broad topic, but how do you actually get it going? It's 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 actually a lot easier than people think. I, you know, there are there are hurdles that get in the way, but I think if you can focus on on some uh, primary actions that really just get it going off the ground, it's it's a lot easier than people think. As I say, so the, a, a good first point is to start using um, engagement metrics uh, to really measure your top of funnel activity, that brand building exercise. Instead of using ROI, it's not there to generate specific ROI exactly. So you've got to recognize that and use different metrics to basically identify what success is for it. And one thing that can then be helpful in this sort of multi-layered, multi-stage approach is having more clarity on your MMMs. That's the mixed media model. And um, basically getting division between the spend on each channel that you have and all the different areas of marketing and sales that you have and also looking at the returns on that. Again, making sure you're measuring the right kind of metrics at each stage of the funnel. And I think this this could be a, a bit of a harder kind of point, but the, a, a final point on this is really to bring teams together, um, which is a challenge in any company, big or small, but get everyone talking. So you're all on the same page and all have the same awareness. So you're all targeting roughly the same audience and working in this funnel you know that could be different agencies different internal teams brand media marketing partnerships as well you all need to understand as long as there is an understanding of the the key kpis at each stage of the funnel and um, then they can all feed into the bigger picture 
of course, lots of other information uh, covering that is over on the Fountain Partnership website. So do go over and check out um, our website for more details on all of those topics that Deco covered just there. And what are the biggest challenges here, Deco? What, what, what challenges are people coming up against and, and struggling to break through? It's the interesting thing is that it's generally the same thing, no matter what sector in you're you're in. It's uh, the two big things that really stand out are technology and the company's ability to kind of implement it. I think there is also kind of a view of our system just can't handle that kind of thing. Um, the the great thing today though is that there are so many uh, so many platforms. You know, there are some out there like HubSpot and and WordPress that can plug into any other system as well. There are so many that all work in tandem with each other. It's actually quite easier, a lot easier than people think to adopt. So, and that's that's some, a trend that we're very much seeing uh, post pandemic. Um, is that a lot of SaaS companies out there are realizing this and and cottoning onto the fact that they need their software to be far more integrated and easy to use. So. Um, that that is probably a, that is a big point for a lot of companies. But the way to get over that is actually focusing on the ease of implementation and how it can actually integrate into your existing system. So focusing on that when you're kind of I guess selling it into your internal teams. And uh, the other point, a bit more political, but that is company organisations. And um, I think this is probably one for larger companies, more traditional companies. And um, there does seem to be, you know, whether it's the miscommunication and hierarchy or misunderstanding of who actually has ownership of it and um, but actually the kind of organizational bureaucracy and actually getting in the way of just just getting on and implementing this um, I guess there's probably some politics into that but one thing that we've noticed and it's the same actually the same thing for pretty much anything when you're trying to sell it into a big big corporation is focus on the commercial benefits no one can say no if the commercial benefits are positive. It's the same things with company culture, with new initiatives, with new marketing campaigns. If you can focus on here's the benefit financially for us, for everyone, then you'll have a much easier time selling it. Brilliant. Deco, thank you so much for your insights today. Really appreciate it. And, and thanks so much to everyone watching. Wherever you're watching, if you're watching on YouTube, give this a, a big thumbs up. If you're watching on Facebook and Twitter, feel free to share. And as always, you can reach out to us for more information. We are at Fountain Team on Twitter, or alternatively, for full details on, on all of the topics that we've covered today, head over to the Fountain website. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.